There are a number of things about my painting um, methods and the, the way I go about not just painting, but the, the, the business of being a painter, of going to places, of going to the studio, that have an element of ritual to them. Even the process of going in every morning to the studio that has a certain element of ritual, there's, a, there's an element of discipline. Um, uh, going into the studio is a wonderful thing to do um, and it's something I value. So it's not just enjoyment, there's an element of discipline, but also the ritual um, uh, of every morning going in the studio is important. And in, in the same way, the necessary um, voyages out, the trips out in this landscape in West Wales where I live, to look again at the landscape has, a, has an, a ritual element to it. The places that I'm visiting, I would probably over the past 30 years have visited and drawn uh, tens or hundreds of times and revisiting them, uh, redrawing them, uh, is part of the point. Uh, every time I go, I see new things, um, new elements, um, <coughs> just the time of year, new things happening, the same thorn tree but looking different at different times of year. But the process of going there as a repeated thing, uh, thinking about the, t the numbers of times that I've been there and painted and drawn this place before is a part of uh, what the, 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 the drawing, the picking up of information is about and also it's what, about what the painting later on in the studio is about. So the first part of the process is going out and looking, drawing in my sketchbook, and then um, going out, I suppose, without, without an idea of what I want. If I've got an idea of what I want, it, I won't find it, it's hopeless. So it's a process of going out almost meditatively, looking, picking up what's happening, drawing, exploring what I'm seeing by making drawings, coming back to the studio, and then possibly the same day, possibly a week later, weeks later in fact going back to the sketchbook and starting to make a painting in the studio and the painting is about the experience of being out on that one day that one morning or afternoon looking at the landscape taking in what's been happening in the landscape but then in the studio it, 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 it's broader it becomes a much bigger thing it's about the memories of the previous experiences of going out and drawing in the landscape and also emotional memories. I mean, landscapes, these landscapes have freight. Any landscape has freight of some sort, you know, uh, um, uh, cultural freight, emotional freight, all these things. And the landscapes around here, because in the north of Premiership, particularly where I go repeatedly, um, these are landscapes with which I've become familiar. Certain places carry memory, carry uh, emotional response, um, have even a spiritual resonance for me. So in making paintings in the studio, I'm reliving the event of going out drawing, but also bringing in this whole uh, half a lifetime, uh, more than half a lifetime, I guess, of memories of, uh, of emotional, spiritual responses to what I'm looking at that I uh, recall previous uh, journeys out to those places and previous drawings that I've made. The painting in the studio then um, develops quite slowly. I, I begin working on it. Um, there may be gaps of days, months, weeks, um, sometimes uh, a year or so between having got so far with the painting and hit some sort of brick wall and then putting aside for, for that length of time until I think that I can go further. You can see something in it you can take further. Um, and Working on the painting is also a balance between structure, the, all the disciplines, the experience of making paintings that I've built up over some 40 years as a student and as a painter, and the ever-present element of risk and chance. Without, without a sense of risk-taking, of responding to the painting, not just in terms of what I know about structures and drawings, and experience, but also responding in a very immediate gut response way, which involves risk. Without that, I mean, the painting that I make would be technically quite correct, but they would almost certainly be rather 
boring, um, you know, flat without spark. Over the years, as a matter of simple practical necessity, I've found that I need to take risks with paintings, to encourage risks, to uh, <coughs> um, take risk on board, uh, use it. Um, situations in paintings uh, which need to be resolved by kind of lightning impulses or you know something much more uh, to do with the subconscious than the conscious control. Of course, if you do that, things can go wrong, and a lot of paintings go wrong. But if you bring out of that difficult situation of a painting starting to if you're able to pull something out of it, you're able to achieve something that you quite, couldn't quite have imagined before. Uh, something that has a, a power and immediacy that I haven't found any other way of achieving. I've lived for uh, more than 35 years now in uh, Pembrokeshire and uh, I tend to work in North Pembrokeshire which tends to be slightly rougher, it's got sort of a more mountainous uh, landscape, rough landscape, marginal land. I'm interested in that the land it hovers between cultivation and wildness and the areas where you find that field boundaries, stone walls and so forth have been built by some sort of immense and for me unknowable labour by someone 100, 150 years ago. Um, you know, scrabbling in the earth, putting stones, building stone walls and these on the, the edge of usable land and, um, and we find now that this perhaps is disappearing under scrub and um, the bracken. I, I, that interests me, and we find that in North Pembrokeshire. And another important element of this landscape is the sense of the past and the present. Now, I mean, you could say that all landscapes obviously have their past, but uh, in the southeast of England, fascinating though the landscape is, um, it's been so heavily built on, so heavily uh, <coughs> farmed, ploughed up and so forth, that the, the past existence of this landscape is obscure. Here, on the edges, on, the, on, on these, this, this poor landscape, um, uh, ignored because it, it couldn't, money couldn't be made on this landscape uh, in the past, um, this marginal land, uh, the past is evident in the present. Uh, <coughs> Burial chambers, Neolithic burial chambers are there, uh, uh, existing side by side with telegraph poles and uh, small lanes and so forth. Iron Age field patterns still in use, small fields still being cultivated uh, with these Iron Age field patterns. So it has, uh, it has a, a, a layer, an architectural past which is evident. It has of course all sorts of different layers of meaning. There, there are... Um, uh, layers of, of uh, uh, history, um, the history of the development of um, the voyages of the early saints like St. David coming here, tales, myths, legends and possibly actual uh, history being recounted. Uh, and this all has its place in one's um, uh, uh, understanding of the landscape. So the sense of the, the, the past in the present is very important. And the, the visual evidence of the past in the present. Uh, the word uh, palimpsest is, 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 is a very good word to use here. It's being used quite a lot now. Originally meaning simply, in its correct technical meaning, it was a, a, a medieval uh, document that had been erased for reuse and the original uh, script was still evident as a sort of ghost uh, on the uh, vellum underneath the reuse. But this is a, a, a very nice word to apply to this landscape. A sense of the past, the structures, the field patterns, the, the, the layers of the past landscape still evident in the landscape that we see. This sense of the past then is something that uh, I find it very, um, very affecting, a powerful uh, presence in the landscape. And it's something actually I think in the way, not that I did this consciously, but the way that I make paintings with the, the layers of collage, the scored lines, certainly not a conscious decision, but over the years it's moved that way. But I think it has some parallels with this sense of landscape as palimpsest.